Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is one of those days when I had a long list of work to finish. My non-modular kitchen cabinet needed some serious organization. Cooking utensils are all over the place because of which a single plywood partition has bent badly. Being a non-modular setup, it was quite challenging to understand or maintain the organization setup of these cabinets. And so, after a regular use and no arrangements, shelves look like a dumping zone. But today, I decided to change this space from a dump ground to a systematic and functional kitchen arrangement. There was a time when I used to crib about the fact that why this kitchen is non-modular. But when I gave it a calmer thought, I realized that I am diluting the solution by just focusing on the problem. The main problem was not the kitchen being non-modular, but the problem was the kitchen being non-functional. So of course, the simple solution was to make it functional as per my need and usage and bring the best out of whatever I have in hand. And so with that positive mindset, I just focused on small concerns that needed changes in these cabinets. Of course, cleaning the space was an absolute mandate. My cast iron cookware has left the rust at the base, so I know that I need to line the base as well. I cleaned the entire shelf thoroughly with soap solution and that made me realize that for me, it's time to start focusing on festive cleaning as well. I had no immediate shelf liners with me, so instead of waiting for any, I used an old plastic sheet and stuck it to the base with a double-sided tape. And it met the purpose just right. I then created a few categories and started sorting and grouping things as per respective categories. I also repurposed this old thick plastic cover to line my cast iron and other pans. The idea was to use simple use and throw item and not to worry about maintaining an extra item in the kitchen. Finally, it was time to place everything at its place. First goes this small organizer to hold all the small lids of the same size and my idli plates. In the front, I'll place all my regularly used cookwares. Pots and pans organizers were not fitting in, so I decided to go with very simple nesting method. The upper pan will stand well rested in the corner and this gave me a lot of empty space in the right side to keep smaller items. At times, keeping things simple and not complicating it with unnecessary organizers creates the best setup. On the top shelf, the lesser used items go at the back like party glasses and travel tiffins etc. And in front, I'll keep the basket that will carry all my glass food storage containers. In the same basket, I'll place Rutvi's lunchbox and everything is fitting perfectly well. Lot of miscellaneous items go into this old plastic box and this tray will have items that need quick access whenever needed. On to the right cabinet, I'll again nest the bigger cooking utensils at one side and in the similar basket, I'll place a few baking tools, molds, steel boxes, plates etc. and place it on the lower shelf along with the regularly used small bowls. On the top shelf, I'll keep all the lightweight plastic items and kitchen utility stuff to avoid putting any weight on the shelf. Well, if you're wondering, I have a separate utensil rack for keeping regular plates, bowls, glasses, cooker, pan, tawa, etc. I was super happy to be done with it first thing in the morning. You all know I have bought some spices from Kochi. Sadly, I haven't opened them yet. So today I decided to check on some spices and clean these glass containers to use them for the same purpose. Okay, hunger pangs stuck bad 
and as much as I wanted to avoid breakfast today out of sheer laziness, I came across this viral recipe of milk bread which compelled me to try this one and share the reviews with you all. The recipe asks for layering butter and sugar between each slice of bread but I decided to add some jam for sweetness and peanut butter for a healthier take. Now in the pan, I'll add butter and toast this sandwich. While the sandwich is toasting, I'll cut pineapple and apple to eat along with this milk bread. Well, the output looked more like a French toast, so I thought pairing it with some fruits will only enhance the taste. I'll then toast the bread on the other side as well. Once the bread is toasted, it's time to pour the milk directly on the sandwich in small batches. Last toasting and the milk bread is ready. I'll sprinkle some toasted nut powder on fruits and extra jam with some nut powder on the milk bread as well. And it was time to taste this viral dish. Oh my god, it tasted supremely delicious. The soft, warm, gooey bread went along so well with crunchy, juicy fruits and the flavor of toasted nuts and peanut butter was just amazing. How I was not willing to cook a breakfast but ended up having a cafe style treat. Looks like it's gonna be a good day. Festive season is coming and why just home should look spick and span. I like doing DIY home remedies on my hair and skin and with monsoons my hair feels quite rough and brittle these days so I decided to make a DIY hair mask. I do not expect any revolutionary results when it comes to home treatments but I know for sure that I feel really good pampering myself every now and then. I have been reading a lot about the benefits of rice on hair and skin and so found this recipe of hair mask from leftover rice. I will make a thin paste of this rice by adding water and churning it in a mixer. And next, all I need is to add some oil which can make the application of this pack easier and also nourish my scalp and so I added both olive oil and almond oil in equal proportion and mixed well. Skin is the biggest organ of our body and so applying what we can eat is the safest bet of all. So I decided to keep trying new packs and remedies because it is so much easier in all aspects. This simple hair mask is ready and now I'll quickly apply it before Dhare wakes up. I'll make sure that the goodness of rice and oils reaches the deepest layer of my scalp to give full nourishment. And of course, I'll use the same mask to apply as a face pack to kill two birds with a single stone. I just felt so good about the new kitchen setup. This is giving me good motivation to revive this kitchen, try some more new setups and make it even more functional. I have been craving for some really awesome rava dosa lately. So today, since I was so pumped up, I thought of making a delicious lunch of rava dosa with quick potato masala and a protein rich power pack peanut chutney. Making this rava dosa is easiest because there is no soaking, grinding involved to make the dosa batter. For the instant batter, I'll take rice flour and suji in 2 is to 1 ratio as the base ingredients. To this, I'll add cumin seeds, crushed black pepper, salt and all the chopped veggies. Lastly goes the water. I used one and a half glasses of water to make a batter of pouring consistency. 
I'll keep this batter aside till I make dosas and in between I'll make potato masala. I keep potatoes boiled and ready in the fridge and now I'll assemble everything to make this masala which literally takes 2 minutes of cooking time. But before cooking the masala, I'll fry some peanuts in the kadai for the peanut chutney. In 1 teaspoon oil, I'll fry peanuts till they get a nice red color. To make it spicy, you can add dry red chili at this stage and once done, take it out to cool down. Now in the same kadai, I'll prepare potato masala. Starting by crackling some mustard seeds, chana dal, cumin and whole red chilies. Once the chana dal changes its color, add urad dal and hing and toast till urad dal gets a golden color. Add the curry leaves and boiled potatoes. In goes the dry masalas which includes turmeric, salt and red chilli powder and mix everything well. The 2 minutes potato masala is ready. Just top it with lots of freshly chopped coriander leaves and potato masala is done. By this time peanuts have also cooled down and so I'll quickly blend it in the mixture with some chana dal, curry leaves and salt and water to make a thicker paste. I'll take some chutney out for dhairi and add half slit green chilli for some spice for Ruthvi and myself. Add the tempering and delicious chutney is ready. Once Ruthvi was back, I took my non-stick tawa to prepare dosa. Using a bigger tawa with the lifted edges works best for rava dosa. Since the batter is of flowy consistency, the lifted edges help in holding the batter well. And this one takes longer than usual to cook, so bigger dosa in one go will save me from standing long in the kitchen. My love for South Indian cuisine is eternal. Rava dosa tops the chart of my favourites. Some people add maida into the batter, but I totally wanted to avoid it and I was happy to see that the results were absolutely same. By the time the second dosa is getting ready, I'll do the plating. Ruthvi got so excited to see the crispiness of the dosa and compared it with the one served at the restaurant. I was so satisfied to eat rava dosa since I was really craving for it for long. The combination of masala and chutney was enough to satisfy my taste buds. It indeed is a good day. Festivities are approaching and doing everything in runtime while also managing the kids is practically impossible for me. So I prepared my list of work and decided to start doing small prep every now and then. I'll roast and cut some dry fruits and keep them ready to use later in sweets and bhog. The use of spices increases during festive time, so another to-do in my list was to sort and check all the existing spices and refill and prepare what's missing. With Karthik not being around, kids have started missing him more and so they demand more of my time now. So doing a few tasks before time makes more sense to me. Considering the need of kids, I have also started taking additional help from my house help in cooking and cleaning. Kids are small but are most demanding at this age and so I wanted to be more mindful and attentive to their needs rather than just focusing on housework and being an exhausted or half-hearted parent. Every day is not the same and like they say, the only constant is the change. I'll cut the nuts in thin slices and fill in separate small jars. 
These long thin slices of nuts look very pretty floating on the kheer or in any sweet that we prepare. Coming back to the spice management, I'll make and keep the raita masala ready for the dahi bade. I am very fond of dahi bade and like the fact that they are so easy to prepare, so I often prepare them during festivities. I also doubled up this task to update the pantry items and refill empty bottles. This collective task surely took me some time but the satisfaction I got after knowing the in and out of my pantry was so worth the effort. I'll grind the roasted spices and fill them in empty bottles. And after checking the existing lot, I'll then open the new batch of spices in the containers and be done with managing the spices. Next in the list of prep is making the imli ki chutney. Since this chutney can be stored for long, I'll make it in advance to use for different chaat, dahi bade etc. I had pre-soaked imli in hot water which I'll strain through strainer. I'll squish as much pulp as possible from this imli and put this pulpy water on the stuff. Now in this pulp goes all the spices that includes salt, red chilli powder, garam masala, roasted cumin powder, pink salt and some hing and mix everything well. If you like the flavour, you can even add ginger powder and now let this mix simmer. Imli chutney is sweet and spicy and so I'll add jaggery as a sweetener into this chutney. Jaggery helps in adding that extra iron into our food, so I prefer this over sugar. Cooking food is all about taste and preferences, so feel free to use what works best for you. The jaggery will thicken up the chutney and after 15 minutes, I'll shut the stuff and let it cool down. I'll store it in a glass jar and keep it in the fridge for up to a month. But this one doesn't last that long at my home. Last task left for the day in my festive prep is taking the makhan and ghee out. I set the cream with some curd the night before and kept it in the fridge the next morning. And then I just add some ice cold water and with the help of a hand blender start churning the cream until makhan starts floating on the top. I'll separate this makhan, collect it together and wash it again in ice cold water and keep it in a separate vessel. I'll try to squeeze out as much chas out as possible out of this makhan. Now that the makhan is ready, I'll separate some for making makhan mishri for kanha and with the rest, I'll make homemade ghee. I'll link the vlog of the ghee making process in the description below for you all to check. Now that my to-dos are done, I'll take a breather to be ready for the next hustle. I hope this vlog will motivate you to make your day productive and gear up for the upcoming festivities. Give this vlog a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share your suggestions, thoughts and comments in the comment section below and join me on Instagram for some daily life updates. I'll wait for your comments and we'll see you in my next vlog. Until then, stay tuned and stay connected. So let us just do my love and see where this grows.